Hello and welcome to the MLB pregame show here on the Coliseum Sports Network. I'm Raymond Sims. We have arrived. Today we bring you game one of the Coliseum Baseball Championship Series between the Houston Astros and Detroit Tigers. The Astros come into this series 4-0 after beating the Athletics, the Giants, and then the Angels twice to win the Western Region. The Tigers come into the series 6-1. They fell to the Cubs in their first game, but have been on a tear ever since, avoiding elimination in the loser's bracket, then beating the Cubs twice at Wrigley to win the Eastern Region. The pitching matchup today has Houston's Brad Peacock taking on Detroit's Justin Verlander. Here's the lineups for both sides. For the visiting Astros, leading off will be the left fielder, Robbie Grossman. Batting second will be the second baseman, Jose Altuve. Batting third will be the designated hitter, Chris Carter. Batting fourth will be the center fielder, Dexter Fowler. Batting fifth will be the catcher, Jason Castro. Batting sixth will be the first baseman, John Singleton. Batting seventh will be the third baseman, Matt Dominguez. Batting eighth will be the right fielder, Jake Marisnik. And batting ninth will be the shortstop, Marwin Gonzalez. And for the home team, the Detroit Tigers. Leading off will be second baseman, Ian Kinsler. Batting second will be the designated heat hitter, Ezekiel Carrera. Batting third will be the third baseman, Miguel Cabrera. Batting fourth will be the first baseman, Victor Martinez. Batting fifth will be the right fielder, Torrey Hunter. Batting sixth will be the left fielder, J.D. Martinez. Batting seventh will be the catcher, Alex Avila. Batting eighth will be the shortstop, Andrew Romine. And batting ninth will be the center fielder, Rajay Davis. Now before we head out to Detroit, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Coliseum Sports Network here on YouTube for all the best fictional sports action. Also be sure to check out simscoliseum.com as well as the Sim Coliseum social media channels on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr. It's clear skies this evening in the Motor City, so stay tuned. The Coliseum Baseball Championship Series is about to commence on the Coliseum Sports Network. We have whittled the field down from 16 to 2, and here are the last teams left standing. It's Game 1 of the Coliseum Baseball Championship Series between the Western Region Champion Houston Astros and the Eastern Region Champion Detroit Tigers. So glad that you have joined me today. I'm Raymond Sims here to call the balls and strikes in this best of five series. The Astros will get their first swings up at the plate. Here is a look at their lineup here in game one. Grossman, Altuve, and Carter are all due up. And they will be taking on Justin Verlander, making his second start here in the Coliseum Baseball Tournament. But he will be leading off the series here for Detroit, hoping to get a W right out of the gate. Here's Robbie Grossman stepping up to the plate, and we are ready to go with baseball here in Detroit. Best of five series. Here's the first pitch. Verlander ties him up and we have a strike to get us going here in Detroit. Here's the 0-1 from Verlander. Circle change in there. No balls and two strikes. Verlander wasting no time throwing strikes in there. And we'll see if he can get out Grossman in three pitches or thereabouts. Kick and delivery to Grossman. 
Waste pitch outside, and Grossman isn't going. One ball and two strikes. Going to be a cool night for August in Detroit, but it's going to be a good one. Not a cloud in the sky as the sun sets in the west. Here's the one-two from Verlander. Another one outside. Grossman's still going to take it. Two balls and two strikes. Robbie Grossman is one of the few Astros that are actually hitting well in the Coliseum Baseball Tournament. He's batting 385 with a home run and nine total bases. He's facing 2-2 here, and he will pop this one up in the air. Out comes Avila. He's under it. He's calling everybody off, and he's got it for out number one. So now let's take the time to look at the defensive lineup for the Tigers. Andrew Romine coming in for Eugenio Suarez here for game one. And here is second baseman Jose Altuve, who has been hitting out of his mind in the tournament. He's really been accounting for a lot of the Astros offense. Four seamer inside for ball one. The Astros have scored four runs in all four of their games, so it's pretty easy to do the average. 16 runs over four games, it's still four runs per. Altuve is hitting 526 in the Coliseum Baseball Tournament, which is about in line with what he's been hitting in the 2014 season, which is absurdly well. That's about the parallel there. And the Astros have really needed Jose Altuve. Without him, the team is batting 242. And this one will drop into center field. So the good times continue to roll for Jose Altuve on offense as he gets on with a one out single here in the top of the first. Take a look at it again on replay. Altuve waited for a strike to come in the zone, and he's been hitting well 10 of 19 in the tournament. So you knew he was going to send that one out into the outfield. And now that'll bring us here to Chris Carter. Altuve, three stolen bases in the tournament, is leading off from first. Here's the first pitch from Verlander outside, a pitch out. And Altuve will stay at first. So he's got some dust on the jersey sliding back in. But he's going to be safe there on the corner. So on the pitch out, it's one ball and no strikes to Chris Carter. We all know about the power that Carter possesses, but he has not been showing it in the tournament. He lines out, or was supposed to, to Cabrera, who bobbles it, then attempts to throw it to second and overthrows, but still gets the out at third. Unbelievable. And we'll check it out later, but for now, here's Dexter Fowler. That will be scored as a base hit for Carter. And Verlander, first pitch to Fowler, one ball and no strikes. Unbelievable. Cabrera made a mistake and then made good on it, all on the same play. So two out now. Carter on first, and here's Dexter Fowler facing a 2-0 count. He just returned off of the disabled list due to an intercostal strain. Went 1-4 for four in that championship game for the regionals against Los Angeles. Fowler gets one past the glove of Victor Martinez, and that'll advance Carter to second, and Fowler is on for the third straight Astro base hit. So three hits out of the gate here, two outs. And that'll bring up Jason Castro, the catcher. Now we saw in the first two games, the Astros get an absurd amount of hits. They got 11 in their win against Oakland and 13 in their victory over the Giants. First pitch, a curveball into... Castro for strike one. Castro's really been struggling 
He's batting 167, and his slash line is all identical, 167, 167, 167. 3 of 18 here in the tournament. Going to look to improve on that here in the championship series. Bo Porter said he's trusting Castro to get out of this slump because considering how many runs the Tigers scored, in their side of the bracket, Houston's going to need all the offense they can get. They've gotten it so far. Two men on. 0-2 count. Two outs. And this inning will last for at least another pitch. Verlander waste pitch outside for ball one. Last we heard from Verlander with a no decision in Detroit's 2-0 win over Washington. Castro pops this one up in the air. Who's going to get it? Victor Martinez comes over from first. Verlander runs over to cover first just in case, but no need. Martinez gets the out, and that'll do it. Three hits for the Astros, but nothing of it. It is nothing to nothing. Tigers go on offense for the first time after this. Welcome back to Detroit. Here's a look at the starting lineup. Kinsler, Carrera, and Cabrera do up for the Tigers, and they'll be taking on Brad Peacock. Brad Peacock getting his first start. The Astros only played four tournaments, or four tournament games in the regional round. So this is the fifth one, and we finally get to starter number five. So Brad Peacock is going to have to follow in the footsteps of his pitching brethren, who have done an unbelievable job. Here's a look at the defensive lineup presented by Majestic, and behind him will be a familiar lineup for the Astros with Fowler returning to center. So will Peacock live up to the other Astros pitchers who only gave up six runs total in four games? They'll have to do it against the best offense in the tournament, and leading off is Ian Kinsler. First pitch in there drops for a ball. Ian Kinsler has been hitting very well. 250. 323 on base. 536 slugging due to his two home runs. We'll take a fastball. One ball, one strike. Peacock comes in 3 and 8 record in the regular season with a 5.47 ERA. Going to have to turn that around if he wants the Astros to win out of the gate. Curveball. Low for ball two. Fastball right down Broadway. Kinsler takes it. Probably regretting it here. Two balls and two strikes. Kinsler manages to foul off the 2-2, so it will remain as such. And Kinsler reaches for the 2-2, and he goes down on strikes. So there's out number one and one pit and one batter in. Peacock's off to a good start. Here's a look at that last pitch on replay. Kinsler watched it veer away. But he thought he could reach and get it, and he could not. So here's Ezekiel Carrera. He'll be starting in left field for J.D. Martinez. We'll move into the designated hitter spot. Or pardon me, this is the designated hitter. Uh, I was thinking of an earlier uh, version of the lineup that was going around, and it has been known at least coming into today, that Ezekiel Carrera was going to get a look here against the Astros. He came in as a pinch runner in an early tournament game. But otherwise, he has not seen the light of day. Brad Austin said today was going to be his day. 
So originally he was going to be out in the outfield and left. But Osmus was very happy with the fielding from Martinez, Davis, and Hunter. So he decided to make Carrera the DH. Here's the 1 2. Kick and delivery from Peacock. That one drops, Carrera fouls it off. Breaking ball broke in Peacock's favor. One out, one two, bases empty. Here's the pitch. And that one right down the middle for strike number three. And that's the second strikeout for Peacock. And now we go from Carrera to Cabrera. Here's Miguel making his second start at third base. Cabrera's production is the same as it ever was. He's batting 364 in the Coliseum Baseball Tournament. Just unbelievable. Fouls that one off. Cabrera has a double, a triple, and a home run. So he has 14 total bases to his name. And yet he's batting 364, which is astronomical numbers. Though he's being beat out by Altuve and Grossman in fewer games. Here's the 1 2. That one high and inside. Cabrera had to fall back. And now the count is tied at 2 with two outs and the bases empty. Peacock shaking off a pitch. Gonna throw his own. And he gets Cabrera to foul it off. We'll try the 2-2 again. This one popping up in the air. Coming into the center field picture is Fowler and he's under it no problem. So three up, three down for Brad Peacock. Is he following in the footsteps of his Astros pitching brethren? Astros got three hits in the top of the first inning, but have nothing to show for it. They'll see if they can do better this time against John Singleton. Swing and a miss by Singleton. Verlander, six-time All-Star. Hasn't exactly been throwing All-Star numbers this season. 4.76 ERA, 10-11 and 11 record, and 25 starts. People have wondered about the, the tailing production of Verlander. But he's not going to let any of that bother him today. Curveball outside, two balls and two strikes to John Singleton. The rookie from Harbor City, California, batting 267. Curveball, another one drops in there. Full count now for John Singleton. It's really interesting to look at the batting averages. For the Astros, there is a severe uh, drop-off after John Singleton's 267. This one hit to Cabrera, going to try to field this better than the last time, and he does. 5-3 to lead off the inning. He bobbled a liner back in the first inning, overthrew the second baseman, and then was still able to get the baseball back and tag out Jose Altuve which in itself is pretty remarkable. Here's Matt Dominguez coming up to the plate. That drop-off I was just referring to, Matt Dominguez is a part of it. You have Altuve batting 526. You have Grossman batting 385. You have Marisnik batting 375 in three games. And then you have Singleton batting 267. From there, it drops off. To the Mendoza line where Carter 
He's batting 200, and under that is Dominguez. Dominguez, 0-2 count. Swing and a miss, and he goes down on the fastball. There's the first K for Justin Verlander. Take a look at it again on replay, and you see the swing there. Dominguez might have had a beat on it, but he swings under it and guesses severely wrong. So he goes down on strikes, and here's the right fielder, Jake Marisnik. Came to Houston in a trade deadline deal that sent Enrique Hernandez the other way. The first pitch from Verlander. This one tight ropes the first base line and Marisnik will be on with a base hit. Now if you look at rating sites or if you have played the video game MLB 14 the show, you'll realize that Jake Marisnik does not have very high stats when it comes to hitting, but in this tournament he has done very well for himself. In three games he's batted 375, and in his fourth game I'm sure that average just went up as he is now one for one here in the top of the second inning. First pitch to Marwin Gonzalez, the number nine hitter, sails too high for ball one. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Here in the top of the second, with Marisnik just getting on first, and still a scoreless ball game through one and a half. Curveball drops in there. Two balls and no strikes. So Verlander, early on here, having any trouble with the number nine hitter. But he's going to have to turn it around. He does not want to deal with Altuve again. Here's the 2-0. This one put in play, lined out to Cabrera. No problem. So we'll have to see Altuve later. But for now, the Astros still scoreless. Nothing to nothing. The Martinez is in Hunter due up next. We're eight batters deep into the lineup for Houston, and we're only three deep as we lead off the second inning. Here's the first baseman, Victor Martinez. He fouls off the first pitch. So it was just a bit outside. In the first inning, Brad Peacock did very well for himself. With three up, three down, retired the first two batters on strikes, and then got Cabrera to fly out to center field. O2 count here for Peacock looking to put away Martinez. Knuckle curve drops outside, one ball, two strikes. It really has been amazing to see what the Astros pitching has done. They've only given up three runs. They gave up three runs to Oakland. They shut out San Francisco. And they gave up two runs to the Angels the first time. This one hit in play, stopped by Dominguez, and then Gonzalez couldn't pick it up. So that might just be an error. Or it could be a base hit, and we'll find out very shortly. But uh, Victor Martinez is on to lead off the inning. And here's Torrey Hunter. That is a base hit, according to the official score. So a leadoff single. Call off the no-hitter. Peacock won't have one today. Hunter puts this one in play, traveling out to center field. Fowler trying to get a beat on it, stands in front of the warning track. He's got it, and Martinez is forced to retreat back to first for out number one. Very well hit by Torrey Hunter. That one was sailing. and I'm honestly surprised that one's not gone over into the hedges. Look at it again here. Hit that one with all his might, but just not enough. So here's J.D. Martinez. 
731 slugging percentage here in the tournament. Three home runs. He'll foul one down. No balls, one strike, one out, man on first. Still scoreless here from Detroit in the bottom of the second as J.D. will take a slider outside. Three home runs, nine RBIs in seven games for Martinez. As I said, when Carrera was up, he was almost, a, uh, Martinez was almost the DH today. But Brad Osmus decided to keep him out and left. He's made his share of very good plays out there and left. And while Carrera is known for a play or two, Osmus just figured to stick with the hot hand. Going for it on the pitch, sliding in, Victor Martinez is caught stealing. So looking to make the aggressive move. Victor Martinez thought he could get in the scoring position, and Jason Castro and Jose Altuve had different ideas. So that is the third time that the Tigers have been caught stealing in three stolen base attempts. Appeal to first, and Martinez did not go. Full count now with two outs. And Peacock looking to keep Martinez off base. He won't for that pitch. That one fouled back into the crowd. Here's the 3-2. Swing and a miss. Peacock strikes out his third Tiger batter. And he is on it today through two innings. Tigers get a hit and nothing more. Still scoreless heading into the top of the third. Top of the third, here from Detroit, still scoreless. Robbie Grossman leading off. Grossman swings at a curveball, one ball and two strikes. And Grossman reaches on a four-seamer. He goes down on strikes. That's strikeout number two for Justin Verlander in the first out of the third inning. And so here is Jose Altuve. He hit a single on the second pitch of the at bat his last time up. From there, the Astros strung th uh, three consecutive hits together. Altuve hit a single. Carter hit a single. Fowler hit a single. Can they get some more here in the top of the third? Here's the 1-0. Oh, that one looked pretty good on the inner half, but Altuve does not go. One ball and one strike. Pitch at about the neck for Altuve. Two balls and one strike. Here comes the 2-1. This one put in play and drops in front of Martinez. Another single for Jose Altuve. 
And that average is just going to keep on driving up. He's two for two on the day. And here comes Chris Carter, the DH. In the regular season, he's actually been on a tear lately. But here in the tournament in four games, he has not shown off the power just yet. As I said, he's at the Mendoza line. His slugging percentage is also at the same place. He hasn't gotten much in the way of extra base hits. Or Seamer taking one ball and one strike for Carter. Chris Carter in the MLB regular season, the reigning player of the week in the American League. Swings and misses on the four seamer. Carter batting 233. With a 516 slugging percentage, 29 home runs, 69 RBIs. Will we be seeing any of that power here in the series against the Tigers pitching staff? He's facing a 1 2 count here, and he'll take a curveball inside. Two balls and two strikes. Altuve waiting at first, hasn't attempted a stolen base. So he did try to get extra bases when he was already on the base pass. Here goes Altuve, but it's fouled off. So it looked like it was just going to be a hit and run there, or a miscommunication, either way. Did try to get extra bases on an overthrow by Miguel Cabrera, but Davis was actually able to field it as the circle change goes outside and get it to Cabrera in time for Cabrera to tag Altuve out. There was still an error charged, but Cabrera was still able to make right on the play in that single play. I'm sure fielders would love to do that more often. Full count to Chris Carter. And the pitch high, and Carter will take his base. And while we haven't seen the power from Chris Carter, we have seen this a few times as he's drawn three walks in four games in the tournament. He's tied with Robbie Grossman for most on the team. And that'll bring up Dexter Fowler, who's now two for five in the tournament. He'll foul off the first pitch there. And he'll get a piece of this one, but it looks like Fowler just grounded into a double play. So 5-4-3 to end the inning. More Astros base runners left stranded. It's still scoreless heading into the bottom of the third. Welcome back to Detroit. Raymond Sims here for game one of the Coliseum Baseball Championship Series between the Astros and Tigers. It's still scoreless. The Astros have been able to get men on base. They just haven't been able to bring them home. The Tigers, on the other hand, have only one hit after dealing with two innings of Brad Peacock. Will he let up? We'll find out here against the leadoff hitter, Alex Avila. No balls and one strike to Avila. And this one hit high in the air, sailing to right field. It drops off the wall, and Mariznik will play it as such. And he'll bring it into the infield to the cutoff man, Altuve. And that is a leadoff base hit. So that's hit number two there for Brad Peacock, the number five starter for the Astros. Here comes the shortstop, Andrew Romine, making his first appearance in the Coliseum Baseball Tournament. First pitch. Outer half 
of the plate for strike one. Knuckle curve also outside, one ball, one strike. So just a bit outside there. Avila on first. None out. Bottom of the third. We change up in there, two balls and one strike. Roman starting today for Eugenio Suarez. Osmus just wanted to give Eugenio a break because he's done very well throughout this tournament. This one fouled back. Osmus was just waiting for the right time to sub in Romine for Suarez. And he figured now would be a good time. And apparently it is. He gets a base hit and he'll advance Avila to second. And Romine is now on with a base hit of his own. So it will be two men on with none out here for Rajay Davis. And the Tigers will be looking to bring men home. And break the seal open here against the Astros. Davis swings late on a four-seamer for strike one. Rajay Davis has usually made his hay batting first in the lineup. He's hitting 276, no extra base hits. So his slash line is identical straight through. This one fouled off as well. Osmith decided to move his singles hitter down to number nine. Just because you get down to the bottom of the lineup does not mean there's offense there. So Osmus took that viewpoint when he set up his lineup to lead off the tournament. A lot of changes. Carrera and Romine making their first appearance. Kinsler moving up to lead off. And then, of course, the switching of some defensive positions. Osmus been getting real experimental here in the late running here in the tournament. Guess he didn't want to get too predictable with his lineup when they come out to play. 1-2 to Rajay Davis. Oh, has to move out of the way on the fastball. Two balls and two strikes. Two men on and none out in the bottom of the third. So you have Avila in scoring position, but Davis is going to have to hit one pretty well to bring Avila home. He's not the fastest guy in the world. Here's a 2-2. Two -two. That one in the dirt, but rounded up by Castro before anything happens. We'll see Castro leading off in the top of the fourth whenever we get to it. Swing and a miss, and Davis goes down on strikes. That's strikeout number four for Brad Peacock. And three batters in, we get to out number one. Can Peacock turn things around? He'll have to do it against Kinsler and Carrera. Kinsler up first. He led off the game with a swinging strikeout. He'll take a four-seamer low and outside for ball one. As I said before, Verlander's last appearance was a start against the Nationals that the Tigers won. They won it 2 to nothing off of a walk-off home run in the extra innings by Ian Kinsler. Kinsler has won player of the game, presented by Topps, twice in this tournament. This one popped back. Other winners of the award for Detroit include Robbie Ray, the number five starter, David Price, and Max Scherzer. This one hit to right field, but 
chased down by Mariznik. So everybody has to stay at the base they're at. And that's out number two. Take a look at it here again on replay. This one's sailing out to right. Mariznik had a good beat on it. He actually overran it. He just had to reach out his left hand. And the ball fell into it. Here's Ezekiel Carrera. He also struck out. First two batters of that first inning striking out. Carrera fouls this one off. So while Kinsler is 0-2, Carrera is looking to not follow suit. He's got two men on base with two outs. And he would love to bring somebody home in his first start. He's got Avila in scoring position. And he's got Romine at first. Both let off the inning with singles, and they've been waiting for their fellow batsmen to get something going, and it's probably not going to happen here. Fowler works his way over to right center field and gets the out. So two men get on, and then three straight retire. So it's still scoreless heading into the top of the fourth. We enter the second third of the game here in the top of the fourth inning, and leading off will be Jason Castro, who popped up to first his last time up. First pitch from Verlander. Castro swings on it, drops into right field, right over the glove of Martinez, and Castro's on with a leadoff single on the very first pitch. So it won't do much for running up Verlander's pitch count, which is already at 48, three innings in. But it will help the Astros continue on their toward pace of hits. If only the amount of runs matched the number of hits. Got to bring those guys home for it to really count. As said before, the Astros has scored four runs in each of their four games, and Castro is out at second, attempting to steal. The Astros have actually been pretty good at stealing bases, but that's really because Altuve is the only one doing it. That's the second time the Astros have been caught stealing in seven attempts. They've successfully stolen... Five bases, three of them by Altuve, one by Grossman, one by Gonzalez. And Castro will not be joining that bunch. Here's John Singleton up at the plate. Verlander at an even 50 pitches, three and a third through his outing. And this one put in play. Rolls into left field, rounded up by Martinez. And that's two straight hits given up. So a mirror image, in terms of hits, at the bottom of the third. Well, look at it on show track here. That's the sweet spot. And Singleton has shown a lot of power during the season. And Verlander, as great a pitcher as he is, is very lucky that that one did not sail over the fence. Here's Matt Dominguez. Struck out his last time up. That was the first strikeout from Verlander back in the second inning. First pitch, and now Singleton's going. Sliding in, feet first, and he's out as well. Alex Zavila makes his seventh start of the tournament after being replaced by Brian Holiday in that last game against the Cub. He he's comes back in, and he looks very refreshed. The arm is going. He has gunned down two consecutive Astros attempting to steal second. And this one fouled back. So the Astros have been making contact, but they have not been able to steal second. Swing and a miss by Dominguez. And he's a strike away from striking out for the second time today. One ball and two strikes for Matt Dominguez. 
He's going to look to join his brethren on base. And he cannot on that pitch. Or when they were on base, at least. Castro got on with a single, attempted to steal second, was struck, uh, was caught stealing. Singleton got on with a single when the base is empty, attempted to steal second, got caught stealing. So we'll see if Dominguez can follow the pattern, though I'm sure Bull Porter would lose his mind if that happened again. 12 to 6 curve, two balls, two strikes for Matt Dominguez. So the Astros are now 5 of 8 on stolen bases. And it really just goes to show you got to leave it to Altuve. Swing and a miss. 2 Ks for Matt Dominguez. And he's going to go to the dugout unhappy as the inning will end. Try as they could, the Astros could not get anything going. 7 hits, no runs. Still scoreless after 3.5. Welcome back to Detroit. Miguel Cabrera leading off the inning here. Brad Peacock, for the most part, has gotten through the game unscathed. He has yet to give up a run. First pitch in her half for strike one to Miguel. Slider veers outside, one ball and one strike. Tigers left two stranded back in the third inning. Here's the 1-1. One -one. And Magri Cabrera tried to sit on that breaking ball, but just fouls it off. Fastball lines its way down into the glove of Castro. Two balls and two strikes. Avila and Romine led off that inning with back-to-back -back singles. And then Davis, Kinsler, and Carrera could do nothing with it. Slider, swing and a miss. Cabrera striking out. And that in itself is a sight to see. Peacock going to work here. The strikeout pitcher has five Ks here through three and a third. That's the fifth strikeout of the tournament for Cabrera, and that'll bring up Victor Martinez. This one put in play, drops into left field, and that'll be a base hit with one out here in the bottom of the fourth. So Victor Martinez, two for two. He, too, was a player of the game in one of Detroit's victories. Tigers come in 6-1. and one. They played the most games out of anybody in the tournament. As they lost and then they had to fight tooth and nail through the loser's bracket and then they had to beat the Cubs twice. So yeah, seven games. A lot of work from the Tigers and they've done very well for themselves. Four batters batting 300 or better coming into this game. Torrey Hunter up at the plate takes a strike. He has Martinez on first. He hit a shot out to center field, but it wasn't far enough as Fowler was under it. So Hunter is now 0-1 on the evening. One one count. One out. Still scoreless in Detroit. Fastball. Hunter's gonna take it. It was in the zone, but if Hunter hacked at it, that one probably would have been an out. Here is the one-two. Hunter deeks at the pitch, but does not go. Two balls, two strikes. Hardy swing fouls it back. Two balls, two strikes once again. This one up in the air for Hunter. Mariznick, is he under it? 
he was, but he deflects off the wall. So Fowler has to come pick it up. And Martinez will advance to third. So a one-out double for Tory Hunter. And that will move both Martinez and Hunter in the scoring position for J.D. Martinez. Martinez leading the tournament with three home runs. Here's the 1 0. Fouls that one off. Martinez takes a slider. Martinez hit a three run shot in the first game of the regional championship against the Cubs. And that was all the offense that the Tigers needed in that game as they won 3 to nothing. Oh, swings and miss on the fastball, and now he's down to two strikes, along with two balls, a man out, and two in scoring position. The Tigers, offensively prolific in their trip to the north side. They got payback there for sure for that 5-4 loss to start the tournament. They shut out the Cubs in two games, shut them out 9 to nothing, And Martinez... Will not be showing off that power here as he strikes out looking for out number two. Take a look at it again. A little bit of break. Land it belt high. And Martinez goes down on strikes. So here's Alex Avila who led off the last inning with a single. Made his way to second off the Romine single. And then was left stranded there. He's facing two outs here. Got two runners in scoring position. Can Avila capitalize? Came into this game batting 300, and this is a guy that historically does not hit very well. He's more well known for how well he calls games behind the plate. But he's been hitting it when needed here in this tournament. Granted, he hasn't had much in the way of extra base hits. Out of the six hits he's had, they've all been singles. But any bit helps. And he'll put this one in play. Rounded up by Altuve, and that's out number three. Two more runners stranded for the Tigers for a total of five. And we'll head into the top of the fifth. Still scoreless here in Detroit. If you like fictional sports action, be sure to like and subscribe here at the Coliseum Sports Network. There's plenty more on the way. Also, be sure to check out simscoliseum.com for even more fictional sports action. We come to the top of the fifth here in Detroit. Still scoreless. 12 hits between both teams and no runs to show for it. Here is Jake Marisnik taking a slider for strike one. I'm sure the pitchers are happy. Their ERAs are still level. But these managers, both Brad Osmus and Bob and Bo Porter, probably tearing their hair out. Considering that neither of their teams have been able to bring any runners home. Particularly unorthodox for the Tigers. who had a tournament lead, 36 runs. Granted, they did it in more games than anybody else. So if you want to normalize that, they still led in runs per game with 5.1. Mariznik reaches for the fastball, and he will go down on strikes. So there is strikeout number four for Justin Verlander.
And here's Marwin Gonzalez stepping up to the plate. One out here in the top of the fifth. Gonzalez lined out to Miguel Cabrera at third his last time up. And this one put in play, rounded up by Martinez, gets it to Verlander, covering first. He gets there in time. And just like that, we got two outs. And that will once again bring up Robbie Grossman. He's 0 for 2 today. He popped up and he struck out. So yes, the Tigers averaging 5.1 runs per game, allowing 2.1. And this one hit right into the glove of Romine. He had to jump up and get it, but he got the out all the same. Three up, three down, and Grossman is now 0-3 on the evening. Still scoreless, but we're halfway home from Detroit. Quick top of the fifth. Can Brad Peacock do the same here in the bottom half of the fifth? Andrew Romine, who just made a spectacular catch will lead off the inning. He'll take a pitch for ball one. Tigers at five hits, four runners left on base. As I was alluding to before, Tigers average the most runs in the tournament, 5.1, and allow the second least. This one hit to Altuve, 4-3 for the putout. On the other side, the Astros average a cool four per game. As said before, they've scored four in all of their games. They have none so far, but they have given up. The fewest per game in the tournament, 1.5. Davis fouls this one off. The Astros, also in terms of raw numbers, have given up the fewest runs total with six. And they're only one of three teams to give up single-digit runs. They joined the company of the White Sox, who gave up eight before going down in two games. And nine by the Nationals, who also scored nine. And they finished the tournament with a 1-2 record. One ball, one strike. Check swing by Davis for Seamer in there. One ball and two strikes. Detroit was the team to send the Nationals packing in that 2-0 extra inning walk-off game. And Davis got the hit before Kinsler hit the home run. Here, though, it's another 3-1 out for Peacock. He's at 80 pitches, but he has yet to give up any runs. As the pitches roll up and the fatigue goes down, we'll see if Peacock concedes any offense. He hasn't so far, but here's Ian Kinsler. This one put in play. Rounded up by Singleton. He'll take it himself. Foot race to first. He's got it. Three unassisted will end the fifth inning. Still scoreless with 12 hits between both teams. Top of the sixth here from Detroit, and we have an defensive stalemate. Brad Peacock and Justin Verlander have just been moving along here today. No runs given up, though they have given up their share of hits. Altuve fouls this one off. Just mining through the stats here in terms of uh, runs per game and runs allowed per game. Kind of to go off of what former NBA player Rasheed Wallace said back in the early 2000s, sort of, most all the teams played hard. 
But you got to look back at the performance by the Pittsburgh Pirates. And they just could not get it going. Couldn't hit on offense and couldn't hold it down on defense. That team long gone. Two losses. Lost to the Blue Jays 6-1. to one, And then laid down to the Tigers 7-2. to two. This one put in play. Drops into left field for Altuve. And he just continues to have a good day as he is in with a leadoff double. Now here's where it gets interesting as we take a look at the Altuve hit on replay. Very good hit. Gets it over the glove of Cabrera. He's not going to have a lot of vertical, so so much for that. And Altuve's in standing up. Last two times the Astros got hit, got hits, the base runners win. This was from first, of course, and Altuve standing at second, so he probably doesn't need to do this. And both of them were caught stealing, but Altuve, one of the foremost base runners in baseball right now, next to D. Gordon of the Dodgers, who have since been eliminated, will Porter send him to third for a better chance to come home? We'll find out soon enough, but here's Chris Carter taking a pitch inside for ball one. The 1 0. Four seamer high, two balls, and no strikes. Circle change up low. Three balls and no strikes. Carter one for one today with a single and a base on balls. Will he get his second one or will Verlander recover? Here is the 3-0. Carter will take it. Three balls, one strike. We'll have more baseball for you here in the CBCS tomorrow same time, same place in the Coliseum Sports Network. And then on Wednesday, we'll move to Houston, Wednesday and Thursday, before decisive Game 5 on Friday. Of course, the Thursday and Friday games are if necessary. Full count to Carter. Verlander's worked his way back, and he's trying to strike out Carter, or at the very least retire him. Eight hits given up by Verlander, but the goose egg remains on the scoreboard. Carter dueling with Verlander. Will it go down here? Swing and a miss. Strikeout for Chris Carter. He now has a single, a walk, and a strikeout. And that's out number one, leaving Altuve on second. Five strikeouts for Verlander on the evening. And here's Dexter Fowler. The sun's still off in the west, and we're one out into the sixth inning. Fowler gets some contact. Goes the wrong way, though. Fouls down the third base side. We had a 7.05 start here in the Motor City. Twelve to six curve drops. And a lot of times by this point, the sun would be a bit further down. But Verlander and Peacock, for the most part, outside of all the hits they've given up, have done pretty well for themselves in getting through innings. Also, there's all the pitches they've racked up. They don't waste any time throwing it right back to the catcher. Man in scoring position for Dexter Fowler, still scoreless in Houston with one out. And Astros trying to change that here. Oh, but Fowler takes a pitch inside. Two straight strikeouts. This one looking, and that's the first one looking for Verlander. Number six, and that's out number two. Six to 
So after giving up the double to Altuve, who's 3-for-3 three three today. Seems that Verlander's recovering here. Here's Jason Castro. He'll take a circle change. Castro, as I said before, batting 167. Bo Porter giving him another chance here to start at catcher because of the talent that Porter knows he possesses. He says he's sticking with his catcher, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if Castro has another bad game and he's one for two so far today. If Porter may bring out the backup catcher, Carlos Corcoran, just for the sake of giving Castro a break, he started all four games in the regional rounds. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Four-seamer high and outside. Two balls and one strike to Jason Castro. Castro was the all-star representing the Astros in 2013. But this year he has not had an all-star season. 233 with 12 home runs and 45 RBIs. Can he bring Altuve home? Swing and a miss on the curveball. Two balls and two strikes. Just like Peacock in the third and fourth, Verlander trying to work his way back from giving up a crucial hit. This one fouled off. Two balls and two strikes again here to Jason Castro. Pickoff attempt at second. And now Tuve is safe. Verlander trying to see if he can end the inning at second base. Can't do it there. Looks to second. Throws home 2-2. Outside runs the count full. Verlander just had a full count that Chris Carter was able to strike him out. Can Castro turn this into something or can he draw the walk? This one fouled off and Castro wants a duel here with Verlander. Tigers fans, Astros fans, they're on their feet. We got a good one here. Still scoreless. And the Astros trying to put a run on the board. This one, right to first. And Victor Martinez will take it himself. Nothing doing. And another runner stranded for the Astros. That's eight hits for the Astros. No runs heading into the bottom of the sixth. Ezekiel Carrera leading off the inning. He's 0 for 2 today with a strikeout. Four seamer inside. One ball and no strike. Now here's some interesting questions. Peacock at 82 pitches in the bottom of the sixth. And it also makes me think about where Verlander is in terms of pitches. While these two guys are doing very well, and I'm sure that unless they, they break here as we head into the uh, final third of this game, they'll go long innings. But if the bullpen has to come out, how will they hold down these pitchers? Both bullpens have had their share of struggles. Even though both teams are on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of standings, they both seem to have their bullpen problems. 2-1 count. Four-seamer inside. And the 3-1 to Carrera. Three balls and two strikes here to lead off the bottom of the sixth. Payoff pitch. This one popped high in the air to right. Mariznik doesn't even have to move all that much. He's under it for out number one.
And here comes Miguel Cabrera. He's 0 for 2 today. Just struck out back in the fourth. Looks like the Astros got the bullpen going just in case. As Peacock is starting to head into dangerous territory once again. Here in the Tigers lineup. Got Cabrera, Victor Martinez, Hunter, J.D. Martinez. All do up. A murderer's row of sorts. Fastball high and in. Two balls and no strikes. Eleven a pitcher. 11 pitches away from one Hunter for Peacock. This one chopped very weakly and foul. I don't know, that one looked a little fair. And if that one was called fair, that definitely would have been trouble there for Dominguez. But it's called foul. And this four seamers in the dirt, three balls and one strike. Here's the pitch, and another one high and in. So that's ball four. And just in general, Peacock might need to watch himself here in the later innings in terms of his control. He doesn't want to hit anybody, and I'm sure he doesn't even want to give up bases on a walk here late in the game. So here's Victor Martinez with Cabrera on first. And Cabrera is going for it, but it's a hit and run that drops into center field. Rounded up by Fowler, Cabrera will make his way to third. So great job on the hit and run by the Tigers as it will finally put a runner 90 feet away. Only other runner to get as far as third today for the Tigers, Victor Martinez. So after a walk and a single, here's Torrey Hunter. Tigers looking for something to bust this game open. We have one out here in the bottom of the sixth, and still no runs. Brad Peacock gives up this hit to Hunter. Fowler chasing it down. And that should be enough for Cabrera to come home on the sack fly. It is one to nothing in favor of the Tigers. So with two outs now, here's J.D. Martinez who struck out twice today. Just hasn't been his day. But his team is finally producing some runs. This one hit high in the air, but it will be playable for Grossman, and he's got it. But not without the Tigers coming away with the run. Stalemate broken. It's now one to nothing after six. We head into the final third of the game, and here's a look at the game summary for those of you just turning in. It was zeros across the board until a sacrifice fly by Torrey Hunter brought in Miguel Cabrera to make it one to nothing. And here's John Singleton to lead off the inning. He singled back in the fourth, attempted to steal second, and failed. So he's one for two on the day. He's going to look to extend the hit streak here against Justin Verlander. Four-seamer taken, no balls, one strike. Verlander in 92 pitches, 0-2 count here to Singleton. We'll see if we'll put him away in three. Singleton fouls that one. The 0-2 again. 
This one in the dirt, Singleton fishes for it. Cabrera rounds it up and is able to get the out just in the nick of time. That's the second 5-3 ground out for Singleton, and that's out number one here in the top of the seventh. So here comes Matt Dominguez. He's sitting with J.D. Martinez in the VIP section of the two strikeout club. Speaking of strikes, Verlander has thrown 61 out of his 94 total pitches. That one inside, swung on late, fouled off. Twelve to six drops inside. No balls, two strikes. Four seamer, one ball, two strikes. This one fouled down the third base side. Four seamer veers outside, two balls and two strikes now. Dominguez looking to join the hit parade. He, Marwin Gonzalez, and Robbie Grossman have yet to record a hit in this game. This one fouled off. On the other side of the spectrum, Altuve in three at bats has three hits. We probably won't be seeing him until the eighth or the ninth inning, however, unless the Astros can break this one open. This one hits, drops into right field. And welcome to the base hit club today, Matt Dominguez. He's on with one out. And up will come Jake Marisnik, who got his hit back in the second inning. So two strikeouts to start off the day, and Matt Dominguez turns it around with a single. And after giving up a hit to a guy that you struck out twice, Brad Osmus feels, hey, that's more than enough. So after six and a third, Justin Verlander, the man who's given up nine hits, will call it a day. He, he may have given up nine hits, but he didn't give up any runs. So there's that. And here comes Jim Johnson. So just like I had asked aloud earlier, not too long ago, how will the Tigers' bullpen respond in what is essentially a pressure situation? Jim Johnson comes out of the pen. And he'll be the first to prove it. In the meantime, as said before, Jake Marisnik up at the plate. Single and a strikeout. First pitch, two-seamer in there. For strike one. Here's a look at the team hits. As said before. This one fouled directly back by Marisnik. Jim Johnson, a nine-year veteran here in Major League Baseball. He's made one appearance. He just uh, came up. To the majors this season. After spending the first seven, eight years of his career, or seven and a half more so with Baltimore, he was traded mid season to Oakland. He was traded by the Orioles to the A's for a player to be named later and Jamile Weeks. So he was released by the A's on the 1st of August, and the Tigers signed him on the 6th. So he's only made one appearance here for the Tigers, and it was not good. Two-thirds of an inning, he gave up three runs, one earned. So his ERA 
with the Tigers is ballooned up to 13.50. This one put in play drops into left field for Marisnik, and that will advance Dominguez to second. So two straight base hits, and we've seen that uh, throughout the game, but it's just a matter of can the batters after that bring these guys home? That's the big question. So here's Marwin Gonzalez, the number nine hitter. He and Grossman, the only two that have yet to record a hit for the Astros. The Astros now have 10 hits and no runs scored. Phil Koch in the bullpen, Jim Johnson. First pitch, a ball. With Oakland in 2014, Jim Johnson has a 7.14 ERA in 38 appearances. With 28 strikeouts. This one hit, rounded up by Kinsler, 4-6-3. Got the double play to get out of the inning. So now it's up to 10 hits. And no runs for the Astros. Tigers ahead, one to nothing. It's time to stretch in Detroit. Your attention, please. Now pitching for the Astros, number 35. Hope you got some good stretches in after six and a half. We come to the bottom of the seventh, and the day is done for Brad Peacock. Here's Josh Fields. First batter he'll face is Alex Avila, who's one for two today. Got his at-bats in the third and fourth inning. First pitch in there, a strike. Josh Fields, two and six on the year with a 5.32 ERA. He's given up 17 walks, and he struck out 62. Here's the 0-1 to Avila. This one hit, traveling into right, and Mariznik got on his horse and snags it for out number one. Romine swings at the first pitch, drops this one into left center, so that's going to be extra bases as he is scurrying his way to second. He's in there standing up with one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Tiger's going to be looking for insurance here in the bottom of the seventh and in these later innings. And here's Rajay Davis to round out the lineup. No balls and one strike here to Rajay Davis. Davis, with Romine in scoring position, is going to look to bring his teammate home. This one hit right down Broadway, but chopped to Dominguez. So, Rom so Romine stays at second, and Davis is out 5-3. Here's Ian Kinsler.
Altuve able to get the force out at second, and so after seven, it's one to nothing in favor of the Tigers. Leading off the top of the eighth here. Robbie Grossman facing a 2-0 count against Jim Johnson. Johnson coming to Detroit. Hoping to improve on a rough season in Oakland. Astros have 10 hits in 7 innings and 0 runs to show for it. Three balls and one strike now to Robbie Grossman. Grossman's 0 for 3. Though he's on the verge of gaining a walk. This one hit into the glove of Kinsler. And the out made it first. So, good job by Kinsler to dive for it and able to get the out there. And then Martinez covering first. So that'll do it for Jim Johnson. He didn't give up any hits, but apparently Osmus was just fine with what Johnson was able to do. So here's Jabba Chamberlain, who we've seen uh, as one of the main relievers for Detroit. He's going to take on Jose Altuve. Four-seamer over the outer half of the plate for strike one. One ball, one strike to Jose Altuve. Chamberlain has seen the most innings this season of any reliever at 48 and two-thirds. He has a 3.14 ERA with a 1-5 record. 50 strikeouts, 17 earned runs, 18 walks. He's facing Altuve, who's perfect today in three at-bats. Two singles and a double. Her ball will drop, two balls, two strikes. Four seamer sails past Avila, and the count runs full, three balls, two strikes. Tuve swings defensively, keeps the at-bat alive. He's on the verge of being retired for the first time today. This one popped up in the air. And there you have it. Perfect no more. Jose Altuve flies out for out number two. So here's a look at the line score, just to get you up to speed on where we're at. That big 10 next to the zero runs, that's kind of the story of the game. As the Astros have not been able to convert their high number of hits. Astros had 11 hits in the game against Oakland, 13 in the game against San Francisco.
They're back in double digits with hits. Not much to show for it. Here's Chris Carter. He's one for two on the day with a walk and a strikeout. He'll take a four-seamer, sails high. This one fouled off as well. Swings and misses on the 2-2, second strikeout of the day. And Chamberlain gets the two outs he needs to close out the inning. So heading into the bottom of the eighth, it's still one to nothing in favor of the Tigers. After an inning of fields, now it's time for Darren Downs, Downs to come in and see what he can do. And here's Miguel Cabrera. He'll lead off the inning. Go ball. One strike. Four seamer, one ball, one strike. This one hit high in the air, carrying Mariznik. Watches the ball go over the fence. A solo shot to lead off the bottom of the eight for Miguel Cabrera. And there's a little bit of insurance for the Tigers. They are now ahead two to nothing. Cabrera kaboom indeed. As Cabrera officially steps on the plate. And I was wondering there for a moment, it was still carrying and Mariznik was trying to chase it down. I was wondering if it was going to line its way over that small little divot in the fence. And it kind of did, but it would have carried over all the other fence, the rest of the fence as well. So it technically did. So it's now two to nothing in favor of the Tigers. Scored a run in a six. Cabrera actually came in off the RBI sack fly by Hunter. Now he scored again with a solo shot. So Cabrera on top of his game here against the Astros. He's accounted for both runs. Martinez fouls back the 1-1. One, one. It's now one ball and two strikes here in the bottom of the eighth. Martinez is three for three, all with singles. And now he's three for four on the strikeout. And there's out number one. And now here's Torrey Hunter. He batted in the first run of the game back in the sixth. Is there anything else he can do to get the Tigers this game one win? Change up, sails in, two balls, no strikes. Change up inside, three balls, no strikes. It's 
So Darren Downs, the new pitcher, struggling here with Torrey Hunter. And Mr. Hunter will take his base for the first time today. Not the first time he hasn't gotten an official at bat. He's one of two in four plate appearances. And it's also the second time that Hunter has reached base. So Bo Porter thinks enough is enough. And after three batters, Darren Downs is done. Say that five times fast. Here's Jose Veras. Jose Veras comes into the game here in the bottom of the eighth because this could very well be the final offensive inning or offensive half inning for the Tigers. J.D. Martinez moves out of the way of the sinker. One ball, no strike. Veras coming over from the Cubs. 19 appearances with the Astros, 2-0 record with a 3 ERA. Swing and a miss. Vera's going to be tasked with closing out the inning. Just needs two outs here. This one lines down the first base side, but foul. Swing and a miss by Martinez, and he'll go down on strikes for the third time today. Three K for the hat trick for JD Martinez. Martinez just wasn't his day here against Astros pitching. So here comes the catcher, Alex Avila. One for three today. He got that single back in the third, but he hasn't been able to get anything else going. He has two outs, and he has a teammate and Torrey Hunter on first. Can the Tigers get more insurance? Find out here the hit, getting into the glove of Gonzalez, and gets the first just in time off the Jeter jump throw. An amazing play by Marwin Gonzalez, and the Astros get out of the inning unscathed. They have one more half inning to make a difference. Will they score two? We'll find out after this. Here to close things out, well, it's the closer, Joe Nathan. He has had his issues here since coming to Detroit this season in terms of on and off the field issues. But all that's under the bridge if Nathan can close it out here in the top of the ninth. Dexter Fowler leading off. He's one for three today. A single. Grounded into a double play and a strikeout. So he is now two for seven upon his return from the disabled list here in the Coliseum Tournament. 0-1. This one tipped off the glove into Kinsler's glove. And the out made easily at first. So here comes Jason Castro. And we come into a, a very tricky part of the lineup here for Houston. Castro's had his struggles. I talked about him earlier in the game a couple of times. 167. He'll be followed by Singleton. He's batting 267. 
And then if we get past that, Dominguez at 188. I don't know where they're going to find the offense, but they're going to need to find it here if they want to come out with the win in game one. Otherwise, the refrigerator will be closed. Here's the one, two. Check swing. And there's a strikeout for Jason Castro, his first of the game. And it comes with the two outs in the top of the ninth. Look at it again on show motion. And he just went around there. So that'll bring up John Singleton as the Astros are down to their final out here in the top of the ninth. If they can't get it here, Tigers come away with game one, heading into the second game on Tuesday. First pitch to Singleton, a ball. Last time Nathan came in to close, it was against the Cubs. It, it was sloppy, but he got the job done. This one much more efficient. Hasn't had any problems at all. Got Fowler to weekly get it to weekly hit the second. And he got Castro to strike out. This one fouled off. Nathan looking for a three up, three down inning. So he can get this save. Here's the one, two. Inside. Two balls and two strikes here for John Singleton. And here's the 2-2. Two -two. That one in the dirt. So two waste pitches. Can't get Singleton to chase. And now we have a full count. Will he go in direct? He does, and Singleton fouls it off. So we'll see if he does it again, or if he'll try to get him to chase. That's the chess match of a full count, as this one carries into right field. Hunter's chasing it down at the warning track. Ball game. Tigers. What a game this was. Verlander comes out with the win. And Nathan gets his save. And man, do I tell you, it, it, this one feels like if we blinked, we would have missed it. It was a defensive stalemate through uh, five and a half before Detroit was able to get at least a run in, just squeak it in. And then Cabrera created just a little bit of insurance there in the eighth with a solo shot to right. So here's a look at the final game summary. And those 10 hits not turning into runs, the Astros are going to kick themselves heading into Tuesday. But alas, there will be another day. But on this day, the Tigers get the win and get out to a 1-0 advantage in this best of three series. And here is the top player of the game, Justin Verlander, six and a third, six strikeouts, only one walk, nine hits but no runs allowed. So here's Verlander, your tops player of the game, and he's definitely got to be proud of the performance. We'll see if the Tigers can get the win again at home and take a 2-0 lead tomorrow. It'll be Rick Porcello against Dallas Keuchel. Hope you'll join us then. This has been a presentation of the Coliseum Baseball Tournament on the Coliseum Sports Network. Be sure to like and subscribe here on YouTube. Also be sure to check out simscoliseum.com and follow the social media channels on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr. Game one goes to the home team. Tigers win a close one two to nothing. I'm Raymond Sims. Thank you for watching.